In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can connect shader graphs with visual scripting. So let's get started. I'll create a 3D object sphere. And for the sphere, I'm going to create a material that is going to be using shader graph. So let's go create and under shader. My project is using universal render pipeline. So I'm going to create a lit shader from here. I'll just call it my shader graph and let's click open shader editor. I won't be doing anything complicated here. I'll be just changing a base color. So let's start by creating a new node and the node that I'm looking for is color right here under input basics. Let's add that in the color that I'm going to choose is yellow. That's going to be my base color. I'll duplicate this color and let's actually create another color. The other color is going to be red. Also, I'll add a funeral effect and I'll be using this effect to mix those two colors for one of my settings to mix. I'll use the blend and the Fresnel is going to be going for the opacity and the yellow color is going to be the base color and the red one is going to be the blend color right here for the mode. I'm going to actually use the overwrite option and this is how the effect is going to look like. But I want to only trigger that effect once I do something with my object. So for that, what I can do is go right here and create a property and I'll just use a boolean here and I'll just call it effect. Now I can drag this variable inside here. And if I drag a connection from here under utilities logic, we have some options and the one that I'm looking for is actually branch. So let's add that in. If the value is going to be true, I want to use this Fresnel for my color. If it's false, I'll just be using the yellow. So I'll connect that and the output of this branch, I can connect to the base color. That is it. A simple shader graph right here. Don't forget to save the asset. Now we can go back to unity and create a material for the shader. To do that, you can right click on the shader and go create material. And that will use that shader graph to create the material for us. Let's go to game window and drag the material on our sphere. So there you go. The color changed to yellow because that is our default color. But if I click the effect right here, you can see that it actually turns that effect on. Now let's go and add some logic for our sphere to control effect with visual scripting. So I'll select the sphere, add a script machine. I'll just use embedded, remove these units. And what I want to do is on mouse down to actually toggle between the effect on and off. So for that, we can use the toggle value unit, connect it to the toggle option right here. And whenever we turn on or turn off this toggle, I want to toggle effect on and off. Now for that, we need to know the variable name and what type of variable it is. And to find that out, you can select the shader graph that you want to control. And right here under properties, you can find the properties that we have here. And effect is in this list. So that's the name that we want to use for the variable name. And right here on the right, you can see that it's actually a float. Although we specified a Boolean in shader graph, the type that we want to set is actually a float. So let's go back here and look for material set float because we are setting the float. If you're setting any other type, you can set int, but we're looking for set float. So let's select that. And we want to use name value option in name is effect. And the value that we want to pass zero is going to be false and one is going to be true. So whenever our toggle is on, we want to pass a float of one. And if our toggle is off, we want to pass in zero. The start state of the toggle is going to be off. So uncheck that. We need to make sure that we also connect the turned off option to set the float as well. And right here, you can see that this unit is orange because there is a warning. The material is set under mesh renderer. So we can look for get material. And this is going to be the simple graph to control that variable. So let's go back here. Let's create some duplicates of the sphere. I'll position one at negative two and let's duplicate it again and position it at two. Something like that. Click play. And now if I click one of these sphere, it should turn on that effect. If I click on it again, it's going to go back to just yellow. So 
Each one of them has its own state. And that is how you can connect shader graph with visual scripting. Now, of course, this is a very simple example to show you how it all works. But there's a lot of more complex shaders that you can create and control it with visual scripting. If you found the video useful, be sure to click on that like button. If you have any suggestions for topics that you want me to cover, be sure to leave that in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.